And we're live. I wanted to say, I wanted to say, Happy New Year. I, I thought the same exact thing. It's a little scary. <laughs> well, can we just say then Happy New Year? We'll really confuse our audience, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so welcome everyone to another edition of Everything is Attitude. Uh, we, um, we were talking earlier, welcome Rosemary, we are talking about some topics and, and we think we found a really cool topic. So Rosemary, welcome and you can introduce and we'll, 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 we'll be, be off on our way. Okay, hi everybody and uh, hi to Al also, welcoming, uh, as Al said, welcome to another, I want to say episode. Welcome to another of our uh, lovely talks. Uh, you know, honestly, Al, at this point, I know it's nice if people are watching us. I know it's really nice if people are interested, but I really love doing this just with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of indulging ourselves as far yeah, as I'm exactly. concerned. But anyway... It's really good because we actually, as we're doing this, for all of you out there who think that we seem to know all of it and we know all the answers, we actually don't. Because as we're talking, as we're going through things, we're learning, excuse me, <coughs> we're learning as well. And we're sort of experiencing new things and new ideas, even as we're talking about them. So today we Ro thought Rosemary, that's actually a good segue to the topic of today too, right? I mean... We are constantly learning and evolving, and right? I do try. <laughs> I, I do try. Um, uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, you know, I have this saying that Al continually throws at me, and uh, my <laughs> students throw at me, and everybody who knows me knows that I have this, come on, baby, come on, you can, come on. I've got my puppy here wanting to get in on the action. I have this saying, uh, it's easy when it's easy. And if you follow that on, uh, not so easy when it's hard. So, uh, you know, it, of course, you know, we all know that if something is worth having, it's worth working for, it's worth putting the effort into. We all know that, don't we? Except that it's easy when it's easy. If it's laid out in front of you, if somebody else does the organizing, if somebody else gets everything set so that all you have to do is perhaps just turn up, it's easy. It's easy when it's easy, not so easy when it's, you know, when we have to, for instance, uh, giving an example, find the time to meditate. Uh, that is, that seems to be a massive stumbling block even for those people who really do uh, want to grow in a spiritual sense. And, and we, we do know that it's, it really is necessary to learn how to meditate properly, because uh, a lot of people uh, think, of, uh, they, they think they're meditating when in fact they're contemplating. There is a big difference, uh, a subtle difference, but once you know and you learn how to meditate in, in a right way, if you never meditate again, at least you've had that experience and at least you know where it's coming from when other people are talking about meditation. And meditation in itself will give you the ability to find such a quiet place within you and such a quiet place within your within your own soul but even though people are so excited to learn to grow i want this spiritual growth i want to do this and this and this when you ask people to put in the work to put in the time to put in the effort no matter how desperate they are to want it it's not so easy people find a struggle to find the time to do these things unless of course You've got someone who's holding your feet to the fire, which as a teacher, when I took my, you know, had my classes in Vermont and people used to turn up, you know, every Friday night. And then before that, when I was in England, people used to turn up. I held their feet to the fire. In other words, they were accountable. If they didn't do their homework, they were accountable. And if you're accountable, if somebody's sort of looking over your shoulder, for instance, and you're going to be accountable for not doing something, it's easy. It's easier than just doing something and doing it by yourself and not having anyone make you accountable. Ros like Ros Rosemary, there's two, yeah, they're really, I was, as you were about to say that, I was thinking the same uh, thing. There's really kind of two, two sorts of 
of discipline, right? You you have the discipline of, of self-directed sort of discipline, right? And then you have the discipline of your boss is telling you to do something. Yes. Um, your, your husband or wife needs you to do something. Your kids need some. So people are, a lot of people are really good at whatever is thrown at them. And even, <laughs> even with tragedies, things that happen, people step up on not, not even realizing how they're stepping up. Yeah. And that's that external pressure and, and, and push, like you're saying, feet being held to the fire. But the, the self discipline and the self direction is where uh, you know me and, and and many others I'm sure struggle with that piece of it because that's the part that's not so easy, right? Oh, I, I, exactly. A lot of people out there. I mean, I've worked for myself and a lot of the time by myself except when I've gone out to do workshops and lectures and so on and so forth. For instance, if I'm writing a book, I'm on my own. I don't have anyone cracking the whip. I don't have anyone turning around and saying to me, you know, you need to put in X amount of hours in a day. I know that there are a lot of, and I'm going to say successful writers, who literally will start at eight in the morning, they'll finish at six, and they have, you know, they give themselves hours and they are disciplined by giving themselves hours when they can, they have to stay in the office and so on. But people think it's easy. People think that, oh, well, you know, she, she's all right for her. She works on her own. She doesn't have a boss to, uh, you know, to have to please. There's nobody that she has to please. She can do just what she likes. If she wants to stay in bed for an extra hour or an extra half hour, well, then there you go. She, she can do that. So people think that when you work on your own, your oh your your own boss, that you have things really easy. What they don't understand, what most people don't understand uh, about you know somebody working for themselves and being their own boss is that um, you if you don't have self discipline, you <laughs> you won't be working for yourself for long. Because it won't work, and all of a sudden the money dries up, dries up, and all of a sudden you're not making you're not making anything, you're not reaching anybody, you're not going anywhere. Because you know, if you decide, well, you see, I can have an extra hour in bed, or it won't hurt, or guess what, you know, I can go out and take a hike, and nobody's going to tell me that I can't do it because you know, hey, and I need some fresh, I need a walk, or let's go to the beach, or whatever it is that you're doing. When you're working for yourself, every time you take a step out of what you should be doing, should be doing meaning working, putting time and effort into the work that you need to do, the, the paying work that you need to do, um, every time you take a step away from that, you take a step away from success, the success of whatever it is that you've chosen to do. I mean, how many people have made in the last, well, we're now into the 1st of February. So four weeks ago, today, people, or even yesterday or today, on New Year's Eve, the clock strikes 12 and everybody's spitting out their New Year's resolutions. Yeah. How many people do you think, Al, a month later, are still following through on that resolution. What do you think? What were the odds? I think it's a very small percentage. <laughs> Unless, you know, I think I think motivation is key too because you'll often hear, say somebody wants to get in shape, lose weight. They'll want to do it for years and years and years, but, you know, their wedding's coming up or a wedding's coming up. That's what they get in shape for. Not for themselves, but for, for, for something that's like this external motivation, right? You know, you, you want to... Uh, you want you want to uh, be less stressed, less anxious. You go to the doctor and you have high blood pressure and high anxiety, and that's the thing that motivates you, not the actual inner desire to do it, but the external force. And that happens so many times with so many different a aspects in your life. But that that uh, that motivation, you call it, that is the that is the thing that gives you the consequences. That is the thing. That you know holds your feet to the fire, so to speak. Right, exactly. I mean, if you can't, if you don't lose weight for that wedding, you won't get into that outfit you want to buy. You right. Know? So the consequences are, you're not going to look good and you're not going to feel good. You know, that's the consequence of that fantastic wedding that you want to go to and you really want to impress everyone, or 
or what is it, the school reunions and so on. Yes. I mean, there are, there are lots of thing that, things that can motivate us. And, um, I mean, even, it's amazing to me. I mean, it's, it, it's easy for me. It's easy when it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for me in many ways because for whatever reason, and I don't know where this came from, I had to, I had to think about that, I do have tremendous self-discipline. There are times when I absolutely refuse to. There are times when I just think, no, I'm not doing this. But if I make up my mind to do a thing, if I make up my mind to, you know, right, I'm going to settle down here and I've got, this is my goal for this. I have tremendous discipline to achieve that. Um, but so many people do not have that. Um, and uh, it's it's really hard. I know, I mean, how many people are listening who have tried and tried and tried to diet, they'll tell you. I mean, really? Really? You've tried and tried and tried to diet? What is so hard? If you want to diet, well, I, I, you, I, eat, I, you eat less. I, you know what it is? I think people, people, people make it, like you just said, it's very simple, right? Just eat less. But I think people have, we talked about this earlier, if you take diet or you take, you know, somebody's miserable at a, at a job or whatever it might be, you know, they, they don't get a new job till, till they're about to get fired or they're so, right? So, but if you take like diet, for example, people will have these epiphanies that we talk about. Like I need to lose weight. I know it, whether it's an external force that's doing it or they realize it. <laughs> So they, they do the New Year's resolution thing, right? And they say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. But then what they don't realize, when you have these epiphanies, what do these epiphanies do? They make you feel good, right? Because you have made an active well, in decision. in the moment they do, don't they? In, that in the moment they do, right? But then the real the, the thing that I you know, think is maybe part of, our, one of our, uh, part of our recipe is that it's it's not just the epiphany. It's, it's hundreds and hundreds of decisions throughout the year to support that epiphany, right? Otherwise that epiphany means nothing, right? You could say, I want to lose weight, but if you're not deciding 10, 12, 13 times a day, not to eat the cookies or not to eat too much pasta or whatever it is, your epiphany means nothing. And you're just going to go through this vicious cycle of going back to what made you miserable in the first place, right? I tell you something else. that's very odd. I know I've never quite understood it, but, uh, um, you know, when you try to stop smoking or people know that you're on a diet uh, uh, and that you're trying to lose weight, because a lot of people go on a diet, not necessarily to lose weight, but for health reasons. But uh, you, you're on a diet and you try to lose weight or you stop smoking or uh, in the case of somebody I knew very well, you, you know, uh, you're trying to stop drinking or you stop drinking, you're trying to drink less. There are all of these people out there who will say, oh, go on, just have, you know, it's only yeah, one the temptation, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, go on, it's only one. Uh, how, just have one. Nobody can see, nobody will know. In the case of the drinking, I mean, you're, you're up against uh, the friends who still drink and get really annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly people got annoyed at me they thought it was my fault that this guy wasn't drinking I mean you could blame me if you like he was trying to impress me in the moment we all knew that secretly it went off and drank but that's a whole other thing but there are all these people and all these friends who you know I can remember going to a dinner party once right and um and I was with this guy and and whenever I was around he tried really hard not to drink he was a secret drinker, but he, I mean, a crazy situation. I know that addicts do weird things. But I, w I came into the kitchen to hear two of his best friends, really good, close friends who really cared about him a lot, say to him, oh, go on, have a drink. She won't know. She won't see. And uh, so, you know, she won't know. She won't see. So it's like, uh, and... And the people are trying to diet. What is it with all those other people who say, oh, you know, one slice of bread won't. The te people put temptation in your way. Why do they do that? The misery loves company, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 And it, it, it's, it's like, you know, the old uh, cartoons where they have the devil and the, 
angel one on one on one shoulder, one on the other shoulder. It, it's it's rare that if you have a group of people, you're at a party, you're drinking or you're eating or whatever, and 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 people know that someone's dieting or stopping, uh, trying to stop drinking. Uh, Ninety percent of the people will say, and it's a very human, a strange human trait. Ninety percent will say, "Oh, have a drink or have a slice of pizza or an appetizer." Come on, you know, it's only one. You can. And, have ha and very few, right? Yeah, and very few will say, "Listen, he or she is is trying to stop. Let's support him." Like, because yeah. you look like the outcast, right. and very few people right. have the uh, the strength, I guess, to do that, or the integrity uh, might be there, but they don't have that drive to really stand up for someone or whatever it might be and it's a rarity to have that support around i think that is one of the ingredients that people need and i know I, this is going to scare a lot of people i know this because i once went to a therapy session with this guy and the therapist said the worst thing in the world to him which absolutely terrified him and literally made him just never go back the therapist trying to be helpful said, you're going to have to, you know, get rid of all the friends you've got because all those friends are drinkers or sometimes eaters or whatever it is. You know, they're all those, you know, you're going to have to get rid of all your friends. But the truth of the matter is, if you want to diet, you shouldn't be going out or being friends with somebody else who needs to diet but won't because that person is going to, rather than encourage you, to become a gorgeous and slim person is going to encourage you to eat another slice of pizza because they don't want to be on their own. They don't want to be by themselves with that weight issue. And so at some point, we do lose our friends if we're trying either not to drink, not to whatever it is we're doing, or we're trying to meditate and someone in the family or one of our friends thinks that it's not necessary. That person, for whatever reason, doesn't want you to find a life for yourself. They, they want you to be with them and doing whatever they're doing. So I think it's very important. And one of the ingredients in this, uh, in, in this quest for us to find ways to, to, uh, to, you know, to have to find that discipline and to find the motivation and to keep that motivation going is to be with people who are like-minded which is why lots of times, you know, when people lose weight, they go, they go to Weight Watchers or they go to some club or what have you. When people want to exercise, they'll do it in a team, whereas they won't do it by right. themselves. So they go to a gym and they meet their friends there and people are motivated. So I think it's very important now for people to understand and one huge ingredient of, you know, sort of trying to find that discipline and that, and to to continue with that motivation is to go out there and find or become involved with people who want to do whatever it is that you know you want. People, will lift, people who will lift you up and not drag you down, essentially. People right? who lift you up, but people who have the same goals in mind. I mean, right. it, we're we're going to be doing these online courses, and <coughs> I think part of the online course that that really appeals to me this particular one that we're doing is and it was you who came up with this suggestion was to have uh, a, a a special uh facebook just for yeah. the group of students who are on the course and that facebook is open to everybody and everybody can go in and people can say i didn't understand that lesson or can you explain it to me more? Or they're talking with other students are going through it. And so they, they're not on their own. Correct. And people, the, the other people in the group will make suggestions. If somebody's having a hard time, they'll make suggestions or they'll encourage and say, don't give up, you're okay. I think it's very important when you're doing something. I know that your sister wanted to learn to meditate. She's going to kill me for this, but nevertheless, she wanted to meditate. And I sat with her for a good hour or something saying to her, okay, this is how you do it and so on. And it only required 10 minutes in her day, 10 minutes. I mean, who can't find 10 minutes in a day? I'll tell you who can't find 10 minutes in a day. The person who doesn't want to discipline themselves. Well, Rosemary, you, <laughs> They're not motivated enough for whatever reason. Right. But you'll, you'll never find that 10 minutes in a day. However, 
if she won a trip somewhere or she's wanted won a won a, um uh let's say a, a I don't know well enough but let's say she's into beauty and therapy and if she won a, a once weekly uh session at the beauty parlor for the next six months I guarantee you she would find the time to go to the beauty parlor but finally the 10 minutes to meditate is just too hard for her so, so Rosemary really I think I think Maggie actually made a comment here too, and it has to do with what you're talking about. So we have so far, you know, understand that it's not just one decision, it's a lot of decisions, right? We also have, you know, surround yourself with like-minded or like um, goal-oriented people, right? Um, and and what you're talking about with my sister, she'll love that we're talking about her. She won't mind, actually. Um, I and, you, <laughs> um, she, uh, you know, Maggie said her mother tried to stop smoking, but said she gained weight, so she started again. I told her I I'd rather have a chubby mom than have one, uh, not have one, but it took a second heart attack for her to stop. And And this has to do with distractions and rationalizing, right? Well, we're all going to die anyway, or, at, you know, I'm just going to gain the weight again. Or um, in the case of someone who's trying to meditate, I tried, it didn't work, so why should I bother? No, I gave it a good shot. I, I gave it a shot. shot. I can't, I can't do it. Like, right. I can't yeah. do it. I gave it a shot. I can't do it, so I'm not going to bother. But if you, to, if you could find, and I'm glad that Maggie's made this comment, but if you could find someone, whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's to diet, whether it's to stop drinking, whatever it is you want to do, you need to change the friends who you know will discourage you uh, or who will disparage you uh, for what you're trying to do or think you're being stupid, especially in the area we're talking about spiritual growth, especially in the area of spiritual growth, there are so many people who think it's a nonsense. And, you know, I have husbands and wives, you know, on equal sides who are saying to their spouse, well, what do you want to do that for? Uh, <laughs> so that's not the point. It's not the point. You know, you don't need to understand why somebody wants to do something. You just need, if you're a spouse, to be able to say, you don't understand it, but I'll support you as best I can. And supporting means letting someone talk to you, explain what they're doing, you know, listen as they're going through it all. It's very, very hard to do anything at all, really, on your own. And as I've said, people who work for themselves have the most difficult task because you work for yourself and you and usually, you know, I mean, people who work for themselves are working on their own. I know that many, I mean, I have had to be so disciplined when writing books because at the end of the day, even though I don't have a boss, at some point down the road, you know, a publisher would say, you know, when do you think we can have the manuscript? So there is that, you know, that pull there, but how much time in a day and how much effort I put into something is my decision and my choice but for the most part when people are trying to change their lives and people are making their new year's resolutions or whatever it is they want to do my firm belief and my you know heartfelt suggestion to everybody out there who is struggling is you know find someone who's either doing the same thing or willing to support you, go with you to, to, uh, to Weight Watchers, even if they don't need to or don't want to lose weight themselves. Find supportive friends. And I know it's scary, especially if you're addicted to something that you're you know, finding a struggle with. Cut out the friends. Get rid of the friends who are discouraging you. Get rid of the friend who says, just, oh, go on, just have another cigarette, you won't hurt. Or here you go, just have another slice of pizza, it won't hurt. Because those people actually are not your friends. They are your enemies. They're not concerned about your well-being. They're concerned that you might do something that they can't do. So, Rosemary, what if, what if the person that's not supporting you is your spouse or your fiance or um, someone who's, you know, very close to you, because that happens, right? I mean, all uh, the time, you so, know people who are in that situation. I know people who are in that situation. Exactly. Um, you know, I think then what you have to do is you have to find 
people outside of the home. Right, still find that support, right? Outside. Find that support. And, you know, unfortunately, it, it's tougher. It's a, and I know someone who tries desperately to diet, but has a spouse who doesn't want to diet and likes the fact that their spouse is fat because then nobody else is going to look at them and nobody else will want them, etc. All of this crazy stuff that goes on in people's minds and so on. You can't fix the person. You can't fix that person. We've talked about this before on this show. You can only fix yourself. We talked about this, I think, last week. You can't hope to change other people. You change yourself. You move forward you know, with your own life. You find those people who are supportive of you. You find those people who you'd rather be with, quite frankly, because they are supportive of you. And as you change... It's, it's possible, and I see it all the time. Your spouse or your friends will change their attitudes towards you. They'll, because come, along, they'll come along for the ride, right, Rosemary? They'll yeah, they'll often come along for the ride, or they're less likely to belittle you because now they see what you're doing, they have more respect for you. And those bull people who are bullies and belittling and like to belittle, it's not working anyway. So they got they move on. They you know they, I know that's scary for people to hear that because you know I, I I see people who are addicted to being belittled. I see pe people who are addicted to being being abused, and that's a that's very hard. And that's all about self worth and lack of self worth and so on. But coming back to the, it's easy when it's easy, not so easy when it's hard. Don't make it harder on yourself by isolating yourself and thinking that you've got to do this by yourself. Because, there's, you know, you can go on Google, you can go anywhere, you can, everywhere, there's anywhere at all, in every town, in every city, in every little village in England. There's a Weight Watchers or there's a, you know, there's a self-help group all over the place and so you know we don't need to do these things by ourselves anymore and the world gives us you know all of this technology so use it and do your research and find those places where you can go where somebody's going to say i struggle just like you i'll help you you know that's what you're looking for you're looking for people who can help you and inspire you and rosemary there's there's almost there's almost a responsibility <laughs> to yourself to um when whether it's someone you you hope to come along for the ride or a support group, uh, you you really we really can't expect if you're trying to diet and you diet for a week and then stop for two weeks. So you diet for a week, even even you know a spouse or significant other that is is watching you, right? That you can't expect them to start supporting you when you're not even disciplined enough when to you're do things yourself. yourself, right? And you're not responsible to yourself, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, that's, that's also is, is a huge downfall, I think, with people, because if you're going to, if you're not really serious about it, forget it, don't bother them. It's a waste right. of your time. It's a waste of everybody else's time. But if you seriously, seriously want to do something, whatever it is in your life, um, you, you make your plan and you stick to it. But you have to tell yourself every day, this is this is who I am now. I'm not the person who eats pizza every day or I'm not the person who's, you know, um, going on a shopping spree and spending more than I know what to do, you know, or more than I should or what have you. I mean, people, you know, do crazy things, but not, we're not just talking about people who are trying to lose weight or trying to stop drinking. We're not talking about people who are addicts necessarily. We're talking about people who, for instance, um, I had a, a lady this week who uh, she asked the question, um, you know, am I going to be a writer? What does she want me to say? What am I going to say? I'm, I'm going to use a huge amount of common sense, which she didn't even need to ask me the question because my answer would be, well, are you? Uh, yes, if you sit down and discipline yourself and write, yes. If you put so many hours in a day to writing, yes. And even if that so many hours in a day turns out to be one hour or half an hour, 
if you discipline yourself to pick up your notebook and your and your you know and your pad and so on or your computer as it is now people write <coughs> it's made easier with a computer i mean you know if you're going to do it every day you guess what you'll become a writer <laughs> right um, at some you, point you will right yeah but if you're not going to do it or you're only going to do it oh yeah once a week or when i think about it or or you look at yourself and think, oh, I didn't write anything this week at all or the last three weeks or whatever. The answer is no, you're not going to be a writer. And, and that, that applies to so many other things that we, that we do. Do you want to be a cook? Do you want to learn how to cook? We don't sit there saying you want to learn how to cook. Get, get off your butt. Go to, you know, the nearest class or, you know, f find find a friend who can cook who will teach you to cook you've got to get out there and do this for yourself and if you don't get out there and you don't do it for yourself it's because the bottom line is you don't want to it's right. not that it's too hard it's that you simply don't want to and and you know i love you all out there please please do not take offense when i say to you if you are dieting or you say you're dieting but you eat that piece of bread or that extra two cookies or whatever it is, it's because you don't want to diet. So don't do it then. You know, do it when you're ready. But when you're ready, find other people to help you because you can't do it by yourself. And you can't, you can't fool, um, you, you know, anyone. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're the sum of, of all your actions, right? You're a product of, of what you do on a daily basis. That shows what's important to you. If you're in, you know, if it's fitness and you're in shape, that means you have the discipline to do it. If you um, are uh, someone who's who's anxious all the time, you know, you're not taking time for yourself. You're not meditating. You're not. I mean, I'm not saying that there's there's always external factors that, that and more. Some people have a lot more pressure than others, right? Yeah. But but you know, in general, you're you're a product of of what what is important to you on a daily basis. So it that shows. That's clear. When you look at yourself, if you start, you know, with your January New Year's resolution and in December, you're right where you were when you made that resolution. Well, that highlights what's important to you, right? Yeah. I, and I think, again, I think there are people out there who are desperate. They really, It is really important for them to, whatever it is, to diet, to stop drinking, to to you know make themselves look better feel better to write to create whatever whatever it is you want to do there are people who actually really do they they do it's a heartfelt thing they really do want to do it but they just don't know how and this is for those people who don't know how or know that they can't do it on their own this is why it's so important when i say find don't don't be, um, you know, uh, don't think that the people are going to look down the nose at you if you walk through the door of somewhere or another and say, oh, you know, who is she? Don't feel, no matter how embarrassed you might feel, no matter how nervous you might feel about telling other people what it is that you really want to do, take that breath and jump off that cliff. Because if you don't do it and you don't go find help, You'll never do it. You'll, you just will never do it. And life, Al, as we've always said, is so very short. I mean, you know, I think it's wonderful that we, we just heard from uh, Maggie who said that she was obviously helping her mother and encouraging her mother to, you know, with the smoking thing. But a lot of people do not have that within their family environment or even with their friends. Go find someone to help you. Life is short before you know it. And this applies to all of us. I mean, I was, you know, thinking myself the other day, my daughter is in a getting towards her late 40s. How did that happen? In the blink of an eye, let me tell you, in the blink of an eye, life is so very, very short. It really is so very, very short. And, you know, the more we um and are about it, and the more we say, oh, yeah, we'll do it, you know, sometime. Uh, of course, the longer we put it off, the, the, the more we know we're probably never going to do it. So don't wait. Don't wait. Go find people who can help you. We have, we have some really good comments too, Rosemary. 
here. Let, uh, we, I was going to say to you, let's have the comment. Can we have some comments? Yeah, so Sharon, um, this was about uh, 15 minutes ago when we were talking. Uh, she, she says, uh, your, I guess your motivation she's talking about, whether you do something or not. It's a, She said it depends if someone is doing it to make themselves feel better and to grow or if they're doing it for someone else's approval. It's more meaningful uh, to do it for your own growth. And, we, and you just talked about um, uh, Maggie encouraging her mother um, unless her mother decides, right? It's 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 not going to happen. Right. Uh, uh, Maggie said hello, and then she had some comments. Sharon has another uh, comment here. We live in what I call a microwave society. People want instant gratification. It's true. If it, and if it doesn't happen immediately, they abandon it because it's too hard for them to self motivate. <laughs> I mean, I've never, I've never actually heard it called a microwave society, but it's a, that's a really good analogy. And it is it is so true. If we, you know, it's like with Twitter and with Instagram, with all of that, it's like instant. Come on, instant, instant. Uh, yeah. I will say that uh, I will sort of with Sharon's comment, and then I'd love to hear some more comments, but with Sharon's comment when she said, uh, you know, if you're doing it for somebody else, you should be doing it for yourself. But actually doing it for somebody else is a good motivation. As long as, as you're doing it for somebody else, you also begin to do it for yourself. And when you start you to feel to realize, You begin to realize that too, right? Right. Yeah. right. right. Uh, uh, and then Sharon has one more comment. Uh, if people need others to motivate them, uh, she's giving suggestions. They can try to find a yoga class or meditation class, yeah. uh, even do. And, and this is something I've done in the past, uh, guided meditation from YouTube or somewhere else online. There's so much out there now. With technology, I can give you a guided meditation, guys, out there. You want one? I'll give it to well, you. <laughs> well, well, you know, maybe that's uh, that's what we, we we should put up on YouTube for everybody, right, Rosemary? Yeah. Very nice. Well, yeah, we're going to be doing it through the classes, but yeah, we could do that easily, very, yeah. very easily. Yes, yes. I don't know what the motivation would be though for you to turn on the, you know, the TV, but yes. Uh, do we have any other comments? Uh, no, that's it. We read, read, I read a couple from uh, Maggie as well. Um, we have Maggie and, and it's really Maggie and Sharon that are commenting. Together. All right then. Well, if anybody else is there listening and joining in with us, come on, let's have your comments too. It's good. It's good. We love the comments, don't we, Al? We do. We absolutely do. Especially when they're... they're uh, I want they're, people they're, to find, find your voice, everyone. Find your voice because that's what we're here for. It's, this is, a, this is a, a discussion that we can have. And and it helps too. Like what, we, what you led with too, Rosemary, like us talking about and talking this through to try and help people well you know you th it, it it makes things concrete when you start having dialogue about it right because you very much you, so you have these um we talked about epiphanies right you kind of have these epiphanies or uh this growth whether it's spiritual growth mental growth you have this growth that happens just by having these conversations just by having these di this dialogue just by watching videos of, about something online you have this stuff that could start to generate thought as to, hey, why can't I do this? Or why shouldn't I do this? I, I want to be able to do this. And, and and use whatever you can to motivate, right, Rosemary? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to come to the epiphany part of it, though. Yeah. So many people have an epiphany. And stop. <laughs> when, when Actually, when it's too late. That's true, too. You're right, yeah. I mean, yeah. the epiphany comes when the doctor says you know, you got six months or two months and you, the epiphany is I should have done something sooner. So right. my point of life is short, don't wait. You know, it's, I mean, there. I talk to people in the spirit world, as everybody knows, all the time. And um, it's, it's really sad when people say, I wish I'd done this or I wish I'd, if only I'd said something. It's like, you know, I'm always saying to people, don't, don't, uh, you know, wait. If you're having an issue with someone, deal with it. Don't, you know, don't wait. Don't, I, but I, I did have someone the other day who said to me, well, I, I was thinking about what you said. You know, we've got to sort out our arguments and our upsets. And I actually didn't say sort out the arguments and upsets. I said, if you, especially if you're having family issues or you're having problems with a friend, it doesn't mean, I'm not saying to you, Go make friends with that person again. What I'm saying is, have a conversation with that person. It may you may then decide. You know what? This is you know. 
because some friendships last a lifetime and some friendships are only for a short time. We get something out of a friendship. We get something good out of every friendship, hopefully, that we come across. Even when those friendships turn sour, it can teach us something. But when I'm saying to people, go and deal with it, I'm not saying, you know, make up. I'm saying, go and deal with it to your own satisfaction. You've tried your best. You've explained how you're feeling and thinking. And then you can move on from that, you know. And sometimes it works out that the you know, the, 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 the friendships or the arguments or whatever it is sort themselves out and you realize you've been stupid or that other person's been stupid and you get back together again. But sometimes you don't get back together again. But at least you talk things out and that means that you're learning for yourself and you're learning about yourself. Having an epiphany about something, yeah, I mean, isn't that great? Don't wait. Yeah. <laughs> don't wait till it's too late. I can remember I yeah, had a boyfriend. The epiphany is just the start, too, Rosemary, right? The epiphany, oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's just, okay, great, now let's do it, right? Yeah, now you got to follow through. Yeah. I had a boyfriend once, many, many, many years ago, and he was, uh, you, you know, sort of involved with me somewhat. In other words, he drove me around. He was very supportive of what I did, you know, if I needed to go to the hospital, it take me to the hospital, you know, to, I mean, to see patients and so on. I don't mean for myself necessarily, but, you know, he was very supportive of that and he obviously often came to see me working if I had workshops or lectures and so on. And one time he said to me, and it's, it's this so shocked me, I have to say, he said to me one time, he said, you know what, I can't wait to die so that I can begin to learn and grow. I was like, what? <laughs> what why, why do you think you have to die to do that? Do it now. So, you know, that, it didn't make sense to me. And I looked at him and I said, so, so you're going to wait to die before you, before you take any action? For you? Well, yeah. And uh, and I just, you know, I knew then it wasn't for me because what a waste of a life. And I do see people and talk to people in the spirit world often who say, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that. And my hope, when, when it's my turn, so my <coughs> chest is still a bit, you know, what have you, excuse me. Uh, my hope is that when it's my time, that I actually don't have any regrets. I, I don't sit, I don't sort of, lay there thinking, what else do I need to do? What else do I need to say? Uh, do, I, do I need to, you know, what else is there? And I know because I have lots of patients who sometimes die in my arms, who, who do not have that peace because they know that they've left something too late. They should have uh, made amends with something or they should have gone on that trip that they've been saying for 20 years that they were going on and never did. You know, I mean, this is what I'm saying. Life is so short and it can happen in the blink of an eye. And here we are, Al, this week. And every week at the end of the we say, and see you next week. Well, you know, the gods, when we might make our plans, you know, the gods are laughing at us because yeah. they know that no matter what plans we make and no matter how much, you know, well, I can't go on this trip that I've been planning for the next five years, but then I'll go, but you might not be here in five years time. And I think that's what people have to somehow, without being afraid of that, without being afraid, you know, that because we do have to make certain plans, don't we? Right. But without being afraid, life is short and it can be snatched away from you at any moment. So, you know, whatever it is, that you're thinking of doing, and I'll say it again, it's easy when it's easy, it's not so easy when it's hard, but you notice that I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's easy when it's easy, and it's impossible when it's not. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's not easy when it's hard, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it just the same, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is you want out of your life. Life is short. Let's get on with it and make the best of it and the most of it. So sure. let's go back up and just yeah. take a look just, at this. I was just going to say, the recipe is... <clears throat> 
find support. Yeah. Um, make sure that the friends who are around you and the family that you are around you are encouraging you in in whatever your you know whatever your goal might be. Make sure you have the support. And as I don't know who it was, Maggie or whoever it was said, you know, there's yoga, there's this, that, and the other. Just Google it. There's something in your town or your city or even your little tiny village out in the middle of Yorkshire in the wilds there. There's something for everybody. There's always something you can find. So find a support team or a support group or a friend and so on. Make that resolution and every day I'm going to suggest a mantra so that you, you know, have a sentence. I will go to the gym today and I will feel better for it and repeat that 10 times over uh, three times a day so have a mantra so we've got you know support group uh, making sure your family and your friends are, are there don't do it in secret you know don't don't think it's got to be a secret thing and you're not going to tell anybody uh, for fear of being ridiculed or whatever it is get as much help as you can and say that mantra and discipline yourself every day to take at least one step in a day, one step. Even if you, it's let's say it's meditation, and you can't, you really can't find that 10 minutes. Well, my suggestion is get up 10 minutes earlier, but, you know, that's me. Let's say you really can't find that 10 minutes. Don't tell me you can't find two or three. So take a step, even if it's a baby step towards your goal. Take a step every day, and then... <coughs> This is a really good thing to do for everybody out there. Um, have a notebook. And either at the end of every day or at the end of every week, write down the steps you took and take a look at what it is that you're actually doing that is going to lead you to your goal. What did you do this week? And if the pages are blank or you're scratching your head thinking, what did I do? You're lost. You're done. You need to you need to revisit what it is that you want out of life. If you're if you're an app person, there's a ton of habit apps that you could click in what you want to accomplish. What are they? Al? They're, they're they're really about habit building and habit creating, and really? you can, you could just list say um, learn the piano or work out or meditate or whatever it is. And if you do it, you check it off. And some of them even have timers on it where it lets you say, I did this for 10 minutes and 20 minutes. And you can actually see at the end of the week or at the end of the month how many times you did or how much time you put into it. See, and, it and, that, and that is another form of support. When you think, when, you, when you're saying this to me, I realize that uh, my grandson learn, is learning to play the piano and he, they have. Alexa, you know, that talking thing that talks back at you. A lot of people don't know what it is, but you say, I'm, I'm nervous to say it because my Alexa is going to kick in. My daughter <laughs> bought me one. I will <laughs> too. <laughs> and, and so you say, Alexa, remind me on Tuesday afternoon at 5.30 uh, to, to, play, to do my piano lesson or whatever it is. You put it in. Rosemary, then, everyone who's listening now, their Alexa did that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a reminder next Tuesday to play the piano. <laughs> Do you know what's funny though? Mine did not kick in. I don't know why it did not kick in today. But um, you know, and so yeah, there are ways that you know the means of reminding you. Uh, I do laugh sometimes though when I'm there visiting. Uh, Alexa's going off and it's saying, Reese, it's time for your piano lesson. And he's not there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, you, you've got to be present in order to be reminded in the, in those ways. But you, and you, got, you have to be responsible to yourself. <laughs> too. Like these reminders are no good if you're <laughs> just ignoring them or I, like you have to be responsible enough that the reminders and the support to help. But at the end of the day, you have to, to, to be the one that follows through. And not to use them so much that they're a crutch and you're just like, you know, not using them almost as an excuse. Yeah, you well, you know, yeah. then, of course, people sort of ha have that beautiful excuse. Well, I couldn't do it because my Alexa didn't tell me. So yeah, exactly. Or whatever, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, you've got to make sure. I mean, I'm of the old-fashioned school. Get your notebook out and write it down or get a wall calendar and put up 
on the war calendar. The only problem with the war calendar I know, because I, I used to have a war calendar all the time, a big yearly war calendar, and every everything that I was I did and that I was going to do was on that war calendar. So anybody can walk into your house and they can say, "Oh, what's this? Then what's this?" They can see what you're doing, <laughs> but you also see what you're doing. So it's a it's a reminder in that way. So that's another ingredient is to get a calendar or to get a book or something. So like get a visual that you know. <coughs> reminds you and urges you forward and if you find yourself saying yeah well you know I'm not I can't be bothered today you're on that downward slope to failure you're not going to succeed in your goal if right. you start to make excuses for yourself yes exactly another little ingredient which I love but I always tell my students this if you set your goals and you have your daily goals because you have to set those goals to achieve whatever it is you want, 10 minutes a day for this or what have you, set them on your calendar. That's another ingredient. So set your goals. But at the end of the day or at the end of the week or whatever it is, give yourself a little treat. Buy yourself. I suggest to my students, go out and buy yourself something. It doesn't have to be much, $10, even $5. You know, go out and, and, and buy yourself something for doing a good job. You get you get something, another little motivation. And again, it doesn't have to be very much. Or, you know, do an activity or go watch a movie or watch a movie on TV. The same applies, though. If you don't do it, then you have to deprive yourself of things. <laughs> you, you know, you, have, you get your punishments as well. So that's another ingredient to get your rewards and to get your punishments, which, you know, can can again be a motivation for you. What are the comments have we got out there? Have we got any more comments out? Um, we have a couple of people say get, uh, Maggie said the Chopra Center has a great free meditation course. Yeah. Um, Sharon says be your own ad advocate for yourself. Um uh, Amalia says, thank you very much. Uh, so inspiring you are to our lives. Um, Maggie says, some people will not listen to your words and turn them around on you. I used to try to explain over and over, thinking if I kept, they would hear my words. Now, uh, with those types of people, I have to say, have a nice life and go my own way. Yeah, you do. Uh, yes. Amalia says, Tai Chi Xuan. Uh, Helped me so much to stop smoking, but my inner determination was a key point as well. And I think that's 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 what it comes down to, right? At the end of the well, day, the inner, the inner determination is your, that's your motivation. Whatever it was that made you determined is the motivation. So you know, if you've got that inner determination, it could be that you were worried about you know getting sick or getting cancer, or it could be that you know you had a baby and you didn't want to smoke around the baby. Whatever it is, you know um, that that inner determination comes from a motivation of some kind. And right? and, and the more you can, like you were saying before, the more you could. Um, be responsible to yourself and use a mantra and, and have your, your, your own self as being that motivator and that self-worth thing, right? I'm worth it. I should do it for me. Uh, the better, the better you are and the easier it will be to be, to be disciplined about it too. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm a great believer in visuals and, um, and I teach my students visualization techniques, which I think are very important. But if you're not a person who has a teacher or you can't learn visualization techniques or whatever or you struggle with visualization techniques here is another thing that you can do and I have I mean uh, I've used this for years so many years and 40 years I've been doing it more than 40 years um, and this works let me tell you it works every time and what you do is you buy a nice big piece of card white card you know, I don't know how big, maybe, you know, whatever size it is, a nice, the size of a, of a, of a nice big uh, picture that you could hang on the wall. Okay. So you get that and then you get a pack of, I would suggest wax crayons because they're easier to use or just some really good 
crayons that you can use. And then you, you get the card. And you, so you need a white card. You need um, your crayons or, or colored pencils, whatever. A sheet, a sheet, uh, Rosemary, you're talking about a sheet of paper, right? Yes, like a sheet of paper. No, a card. A card. A card, you know, that's no, not paper. No, 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 no. Like, like thick paper? Card. Okay. Do you know what card is, right? It's like, you know, it's thicker than paper, darling. Yeah, like a thicker piece uh, of paper. Like, yeah. uh, like whatever it is they use to make uh, Christmas cards and birthday cards. And uh, as long as it doesn't fall apart, it doesn't have to be very thick. But if you make a, you get a nice sturdy piece of card and you need your colored pencils or crayons and then you need uh, a black felt tip pen. Right, those three things. So you can, most people can find crayons. If you've got kids, they'll have them somewhere. Well, we're not talking about you spending a lot of money here to do this, right? So you get the card and then you make a border. You draw with it about an inch, an inch to an inch and a half, probably an inch and a half, a nice wide border around the edge of the card, okay? And then you go to town with your colored uh, crayons. You can just do swirls and rainbows and what have you in different colors, or you can make shapes and your hearts and flowers and whatever it is. But the idea is to fill this space, this border, with fill it with the brightest and the most beautiful. Do not use blacks, do not use dark greens, do not use dark blues, just really vibrant, bright colors. And you make, you know, now it's sort of going to stand out, right? The beautiful border, uh, whether you put patterns in there, whether you don't put patterns, whatever it is, just bung it in there, right? Make it great. Then you sit down and you take a moment or four or ten or whatever, however many moments it takes you to think about your life and to think about what it is that you want to achieve in life. Now, a lot of people would be happy with a new house or a new car or $5,000 in the bank or you think of the things that are important to you. Is it, are you looking for a good relationship? What are the things that are important to you? If you're on a diet, I want to lose 20 pounds in the next six months or in the next year. Think about the things that are important to you. You can have no more than five, right? But five points, five changes in your life, that's a lot of changes. Then you decide which in order are the most important. One, two, three, four, or five. I'm giving you an extra one. I usually tell my students, you only got four, but give you an extra one. Here's five points. So you right in the middle of the card, you take your black felt tip pen and in large letters, number one, number two underneath, number three underneath, number four underneath and so on. So you're making your list and then by number one, you put the most important thing. Let's say that important thing is going to be $5,000 in the bank because that means security for a lot of people. If you want only $2,000, that's also fine. A new job. Uh, better health, uh, losing weight, whatever it is that's important to you, the most important, you put it down in order of importance. Then you find somewhere in your house a room that you go into every day, every single day, and you put this card up there. So it's like a nice big picture. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, I can't do that because so-and-so goes into that room. Or when I have friends, they go, and people are going to say to me, what is, what is that then? Some people don't mind. If somebody says to you, what is that? You say, they're my goals that I'm going to achieve. They're my goals. So you've put it somewhere, even if it's in your bathroom or your own private bedroom, or but it's got to be a place where you go every single day and you will see it every single day. Now, just like that gorgeous picture that you buy, you put it on the wall and then you don't really see it, you know, so it be, becomes so familiar you don't really notice it. 
except every now and again, you, oh yeah, that look at that picture, that's great. It will become invisible in some ways to you, except that on a subconscious level, your subconscious will register that every single day, every day. And you, when you look at it or when you remind yourself of it, it is a visual reminder to you and it works. You know, you put it some, you've got to put it somewhere where you see it every day and on a subconscious level, your subconscious will register. These are the things I want. These are the things I really want. Of course, to be clear, those goals that you choose for yourselves have to be attainable. Pretty much anyone, if you work at it, can get a certain amount of money in the bank. If you want a new house, pretty much anyone, if you work at it, can get that. If you want to lose weight, pretty much anyone can do that and so on. Don't You can't ask for the impossible. I want to become a millionaire, which is stupid. These goals have to be realistic goals for you. But that works. So there you are, everybody. There's your recipe. Make your card. Get your friends. So on and so forth, right? And Sharon said for the... Um... I guess the Americanized version, cardstock or poster board is, is, is what it's called here anyway. Oh, cardstock card or poster board. board. All right, then I'll have to remember that then. Well, uh, thank you. Same, same thing, card, it's cardstock or poster board. Um, Did but, you really uh, not understand when I said card then now? No, I, I, I had a feeling it was card like cardstock or poster board, but I wasn't, I wasn't you know. <laughs> you know, we have this huge language gap, right? <laughs> well, you know, everybody thinks that the English and the Americans speak the same language, but we absolutely do not. Yeah, you've told me a number it, of different words. Yeah. It, was so, it was so frustrating for me when I first came here. And for years afterwards, and even now sometimes I come across it, I'll, I'll say something which is, it's, you know, such an English thing to say. And people, people actually can get offended. And I'm thinking, <laughs> but, you know... What's wrong with that? Well, you know, the, the you know, what, what Brits use certain words. You said, but you said the other thing. Yeah, balmy, and uh, it means two different things. Yeah, it, well, things. actually, you know, no, balmy and balmy are the same thing for us. No, no, it's a two, it's a, they're, they're two different things, spelled differently as well. Uh, balmy is as in crazy, it's B A R M. Why balmy, yeah, and <laughs> balmy as in the winds blowing warm wind. Right, right, right. Yeah. Now you said another one, the uh, the hood. Yeah, we uh, called the hood. We called the hood of a car, and you called something else, right? Yeah, the 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 the. You call it the hood and the trunk, and we call it the. Oh gosh, we call it the boot and the. What do we call them? <laughs> somebody, somebody out there, English is, oh my gosh, they're going to really be disgusted with me. Well, it is, it, is getting, it is getting late by you, and you are hungry probably, right? <laughs> Actually, I'm going to have a bacon sandwich in a minute. <laughs> That's what I'm going to have for my dinner. All right. Well, uh, thank you again, Rosemary. You can, I'll let you close out. Another really fun episode. Um, and... Uh, some really great comments as well that we appreciate. And we, uh, do. We, we do appreciate all of your lovely comments. And if you uh, want to connect with me, Rosemary, Rosemary, Altair.com. If you want to connect with Al. Al at Alpazano.com. And if you want to connect with um, everything is attitude or you'd like to, you know, pose a subject or what have you, would you like to be on the show? Info at, you see, I'm surprised you, Al. Info. Yeah. <laughs> and everything is attitude.com and Al checks that on a regular basis, right, Al? And uh, and we, we are we were talking about um, possibly doing private consultations with this too as well, Rosemary, correct? Yes, we are. We're thinking, you know, because I, I do get emails from people saying, you know, I've tried this and I can't do that and so on. And so we are thinking of to actually sort of putting it out there if anybody's interested. It would not be a consultation like I do consultations. We would not be connecting with uh, the spirit world in that it's simply, you know, just basically an advice column, but you get per personal and private advice from Al and I. Uh, not public. 
we, it would never be a public thing. It would be private to you. So if you're interested in that, certainly uh, email us info at everythingisattitude.com. Sure. In the meantime, Al, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We're going to chat afterwards, I think, for a yeah. minute or two at least. Info at everything is attitude. Uh, we're here every Friday, six o'clock, uh, Standard Eastern Time. So, Al, thank you very much uh, for co hosting with me and for all of you out there. Uh, until, until, until we see you again. And we already said life is short. You never know. Wait, Sharon so, just said it's the bonnet of the car. Bonnet, she said. Sharon, bless you, darling. <laughs> I'm going to be in so much trouble with my friends because I couldn't think of it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, yes. And so until we see you again, and hopefully that's going to be on Thursday morning with our live YouTube show, Thursday morning live, you can ask any questions or, uh, or and or uh, Friday night, if you want to join us again, um, please, uh, you know, let us know how you're enjoying the show. Just email us, let us know. We love the comments. Thank you all for being there and putting up with Al and I while we indulge ourselves in these great conversations that we have all the time. And so until we see you again next week, whenever that is, Please, 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 please have a very, very, very blessed.